UK's approach to male genital cutting is indefensible, says an expert. In the United Kingdom, Dr. Kai Muller, who is the Associate Professor of Law at the London School of Economics, said genital cutting is wrong, quote, as a matter of principle in the Oxford Journal of Legal Studies. He writes, quote, the current dominant view, according to which is uh, in the common law, creates an exception for the case of male genital cutting, which has been shown to be arbitrary and indefensible, end quote. Moeller says that the argument that male genital cutting should be allowed because it is often performed for religious reasons, while male genital cutting has no religious basis, is unconvincing. He says, neither form of genital cutting can be justified from the perspective of religious freedom because, quote, the right to manifest one's religion can, and in some scenarios must, be limited when it is necessary to protect the rights of others, end quote. So I wanted to include this news because I often am talking about FGM a lot. I want to bring more awareness to FGM, but... I also think that male genital mutilation, more commonly known to as just circumcision, is equally as reprehensible and it is equally as indefensible. And um, just because it is more socially accepted doesn't mean it's okay. It doesn't mm. mean there is a rational reason for it. There are only rare cases in which it is medically necessary for baby boys. And um, we need to call this out because the pain it causes is serious. Yeah, I mean, every time I, I, I would go out and say this should have been a crime. And this is one of the most ignored human rights violations uh, that apparently we're just living with and everybody's accepting. Torturing little babies and, cut, and cutting their genitals with sharp objects. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, this is, like, this is the norm. This is a thing. Um, Every time I want to think about how far, you know, gone the world is when it comes to how stupid and how moronic the world is, I, this is what I remind myself in. Most of the planet has accepted that this is an on, on an ongoing basis. We're cutting the genitals of little babies, uh, torturing them, and it's not a crime, and it's normalized, and apparently this is a thing. Um and you know, people are not raising the alarm on this. This is you know, to, to me that is like I can't even imagine how we got how we got here. And again, how we got here is with religion. A lot of people also mention that oh, this is no. I know secular people who do not do this as well who are not religious. Yeah, I know, I know. But it was normalized because of religion. This was introduced to us with religion. So uh, shut the fuck up. Um, but. But again, uh, Susanna mentioned that there is, um, it's as as bad as FGM. I will actually it's go worse out, on a mass scale. Uh, yeah. So on an individual um, level, female genital mutilation, each one female genital mutilation is far worse than one male genital mutilation individually if you compare them. But on a, on, as a, in, if you add up the entire misery and entire pain, um, that male genital mutilation causes, then as, a, as an aggregate, then a, male genital mutilation or male circumcision is way, way, way worse of a problem than female genital mutilation because it's a lot more normalized and it's happening at astronomically much higher numbers than female genital mutilation. Um, yeah, so th this is what, if, if you go out and arrest somebody, you know, like if you kidnap a grown man in the street and then just take them into a van and then take a take some knife and just start cutting their genitals. This would be on, on this would be headline news. People would be shocked and outraged. So, uh, but you, the same thing if you do that to a defenseless baby that cannot speak for himself. Apparently, oh, it's a baby now. That's okay. A grown man, it's it's not okay. That's torture. That should be a crime. But if you do the same thing, if you torture the same baby with sharp knives. That sh that's accepted into the world that we live li live today. This is, yeah, I, I still can't understand how, how we got here. I think I think it's also because of the mentality that babies are the parents' property or something like that. The parents own their babies, so they can do whatever they want with them, which is wrong. I, I don't think that should be the case. I'm completely against it, but I think that kind of mentality also uh, promotes this. 
I, I used to be only somewhat against male circumcision because I thought like, okay, this is unnecessary. Every t- the, the data, the so-called scientific data that shows that this is a good thing have all been debunked. And I was like, okay, this is unnecessary. Why are we doing this to babies? Until we had an expert on our show on secular jihadists. And I was informed that is this is all done without anesthetics. And I was like, wait, so you're telling me as we speak right now, there are thousands of babies who are actually being tortured and screaming in pain right now without anesthetics, and nobody is saying shit about it. Like then I realized, like, okay, this is not just something that is unnecessary and wrong. This is one of the greatest human rights violation that everybody is just being okay with, and everybody is just doing it. When I realized that all of them are experiencing all the pain. But go on. I think it's I I get really frustrated because um so like we say all the time, there's nothing wrong with in your activism or whatever, having a, spe- a specific focus, right? Everyone needs to have kind of a, a specialized focus so that you can be most effective in that focus. And so a lot of people are solely focused on FGM and it de- deserves a lot of attention, but I think it gets more sympathy and people do not take the fight against male genital mutilation seriously. And I will speak from the fact that I used to laugh it off. I used to think it was stupid that people would get this upset about baby penises. I tried to sit through a documentary about this debate between whether male circumcision, genital mutilation is okay or not. And I couldn't get through it because I was laughing because I thought it was silly and stupid that all these adults were so concerned about baby penises. Right. And I'm, ashamed of myself for thinking that way because it is a serious problem and it's sexist. It's sexist to think that the pain that these baby boys go through is not important in comparison to what these little girls go through. Both are horrific and both need to be banned globally, in my opinion. Um, But so it's okay if you focus on FGM But I get frustrated when people who focus on FGM refuse to acknowledge the seriousness of male genital mutilation. You can you can focus on FGM, but please acknowledge that male genital mutilation is important, too, because some I have seen again anecdotes um, act like it's not a big deal. And it is. It's a huge deal. Yeah, I I actually want to say something about that, too. Like, I have a couple things to say. One thing is I am so glad about this article. Like, I remember I found this article and I was posting it. This guy isn't just saying, well, it's not really good and it doesn't have any medical need. He is unequivocal. He says genital cutting is wrong as a matter of principle. And I'm really glad that someone has the balls to say this because so many people want to kind of pussyfoot around this issue. I know I'm being crazy, but they are, they don't want to come out and take a stand on it. And I like how he, he does and that he suggests that they should be, he said that, you know, he's refuting the idea that they should be treated differently and creates an exception for boys that is arbitrary and indefensible. And he also says that the um, religious basis is unconvincing. And so I'm, I'm just really glad to see just such a really principled stand on this. And I want to say that it is horrifically sexist. It's horrific to do to a child. Um, another thing about the sexist nature of it, which to your point about thinking it's funny, is people make jokes all the time when I try and talk about this, about how women like it better, or you want the baby to look like their father, or, you know, all these things that somehow it's this very... Um, sort of looks based oriented thing or group in group thing as well, or chicks dig it, which I just is gross to me, which is the exact same thing that you might say about why a woman is circumcised. It's just gross. It's horrific. It's painful. It's terrible for a baby. And then the other thing I want to say, and I'm done with this is that the idea of consent, like Armin was saying, people are doing this to their babies it's hurting them. They have no anesthesia. It's going on everywhere. I think it's a, and parents get to choose. I think it's a real misunderstanding of what the concept of consent in a medical 
environment when you have a child. Children can't give consent, but only the person who's having a procedure done to them can give consent. The parents can authorize it. Okay. And when you start talking about it that way, I think that it, it helps people to really understand that if you tattooed a baby, people would be like, the baby didn't, how do you know? You just said they could do it. The baby, you know, if you, you know, all kinds of things. If you, you know, did some other body modification to a baby, like split their tongue or put big holes in their, like not just the ear piercing, but the big ones. So, well, I authorized it. Well, that's all you're doing when you mutilate your child's genital. This child can't consent to that. You don't know what this child's going to want in the future. So anyways, I know we're spending so much time on stuff, but this, I'm so glad that this doc, this uh, doctor, this uh, lawyer is calling this out. It really needs to be called out. It is a terrible, horrific, sexist, awful practice. And mm -hmm. people need to leave children's genitals alone. Yeah, good. Yeah, that should be a hashtag. Leave it, anyway. That's mine. Whenever on one of these articles, leave children's genital, genitals alone. And being a parent who had to think about this, like I had a daughter, luckily, in terms of having to deal with my mother. But I mean, absolutely not. You know, I mean, it is horrible, 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 horrible. And people take their kids to have it done. So I just, I'm just going to say a few things, and then we have to move on to the next news. Uh, you were saying uh, it's puzzling how many atheists in Israel still practice it and make various excuses uh, mm -hmm. for it. Uh, that's one. Um, okay, and I'm also going to share some comments from uh, the Facebook page. Uh, Michael is saying. Wait, it looked like Shabam had something to say. Oh, Shabam, go ahead. You go first. Okay, and uh, no, I wanted to like reply to Rivka, like. You, when you're talking about tattoos and piercing on babies, that's still going too far. I've seen people going crazy about just uh, like when their parents put makeup on babies or just dress them in certain clothes. Even then, people just go crazy. And these people don't care about like when they tear off the penises. That's, uh, I mean, tattoos and piercings are like going too far. So, I mean, I, we have to look like how normalized it has become that it is not even a concern when you can be crazy for makeup or certain types of clothes on babies, but you are not crazy about the tearing off a part of their body. Right. Uh, I also want to mention if, uh, something Darko, Darko mentioned in the YouTube live chat, which is true. There are some rare cases where this is a medical condition that needs to be treated with, uh, you know, with circumcision. Uh, do, like we're not obviously we're not talking about those rare cases where there is a medical need for this. We're talking about the vast majority of the time that there is no med medical necess uh, you know yeah. But obviously in those rare cases where the doctor says that yeah this is necessary, then obviously do those. Um, with regards, uh, guys, after this, let's just move on to the next. Issue. There's just Michael saying cannot fathom how the religious can t think this is a child made in the image of God. Now to mutilate the bit that the deity did not get right uh, does not r really say very much about the design capabilities of of their god. Stephanie is saying, "I didn't even pierce my daughter years until they were old enough to ask for it, but I didn't understand how terrible circumcision was until after I had done it in the hospital when my boys were born." It is definitely a decision that I regret. I try to guide others to do research, uh, b um, but did okay. I don't. I think the rest of it is not written. But yeah, okay. So that was uh, it. Michael's comment, though, that the God didn't get it right. That's not true. It's Judaism, right? The the covenant. It's not that God's saying he didn't get it right. It's that he demands a blood sacrifice. I'm serious. Over and over and over again, Yahweh has blood sacrifice. It's a contract. If you, you right, get, and that's the blood. That's the part of it. That's the blood sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, move you on. Give, you give me, you give me foreskin. I give you a lot of children. And I, I, my question is always like, why does God want foreskin? Over all over the Bible, like God is obsessed with foreskins. Like, give me foreskins, and I want to know what is God doing with all that foreskin. What is he? What is his plan? Is it the king thing? I don't understand. Somebody explain that to me. Well, back in the day, monks 
thought that the rings around Saturn were Jesus's foreskin. So maybe that's where they're going. They're orbiting Saturn. Okay. All right. This is getting know. really weird. Let's, Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has what's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like bell <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that. They want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even you know, people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about <laughs> that anymore. But we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos 